Okay, I'm going to go through a spreadsheet example of creating a loan amortization table. And the amortization table is going to allow us to keep track of the loan balance, how much interest and how much principal we're paying each period over the life of the loan. All right, and uh, we're going to we're going to be assuming that we borrow three hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars and paying five point eight seven five percent interest. We're going to do that for thirty years. All right, uh, I went ahead and. Uh, calculated the monthly payment on that all right so uh, using the PMT function we find that uh, we're gonna pay uh, 21 29 54 each month all right but some of that monthly payment goes towards interest and some goes towards principal uh, so how much uh, goes to each portion all right so uh, to calculate the interest I'm going to use the I PMT function all right, it looks a lot like the PMT function. It wants an interest rate. It needs to be converted to a uh, monthly rate. All right, it wants to know what period in the loan you're talking about. Okay, it wants to know uh, how many periods there are in the loan. All right, and then it needs to know how much you borrowed uh, at the beginning. All right, so I'm going to get the negative uh, present value of the loan. All right, and so with these financial functions, uh, basically they work uh, better if if you uh, if you make the present value negative. All right, so it's going to give us uh, an interest paid. It's going to express it a positive number, okay, instead of a negative number. All right, so that is the interest in the first month. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead in and make a couple changes to this formula. All right, I always want to point at this interest rate, so I'm going to absolute reference that. I always need to point at the length of the loan, so I'll absolute reference that. All right, and we need to anchor to the original loan amount, the $360,000. All right, so uh, you don't see any change immediately, but it, without making those absolute reference, uh, the rest of the calculations won't be done correctly. All right. Okay, so now what's left for principal? Well, basically it's the 21 29 54 minus 17 62 50. Uh, I could do it mechanically like that. I'm going to use the PPMT function. All right, and uh, it looks identical to the IPMT function. It wants this rate. All right, we're going to have to express it as a monthly rate. It wants to know what period you're talking about. It wants to know how long the loan is. All right, and again, it needs to know uh, what, how much did you borrow uh, at the beginning. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave off these last two arguments. All right, future value, if I leave it off, it's assumed to be zero. Uh, type, if I leave it off, it's assumed uh, that the interest starts accruing immediately. All right, and most loans work uh, that way. Okay. Okay, so the amount of the first month's payment that goes towards principal is three sixty seven oh four. We can see that the vast majority of the first month here goes towards interest. All right, what is the balance after one month's payment? I'll subtract away the principal. Okay. All right, so once we have that set up, uh, we only have to do it once, and then we should be able to just copy the formulas down. All right, so I'm going to select all three cells. I'm going to get in the lower right of uh, the G column here, look for the fill handle, and then double click. All right, and if all goes well, all right, I've made a chart here. We can see that, okay, the balance ends at zero. Uh, we can kind of double check down at the bottom of the table and see that, okay, the last value here is zero. So we've paid all the money back. Okay. All right. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I also calculated how much we paid in total interest. So I summed the F column. All right. Uh, and then uh, for, for the purposes of the chart, I created this cumulative interest column uh, so we can see uh, what happens to, uh, to it um, in, in, uh, relative to the, to the loan balance. All right. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to sum this column. All right, so I'm going to get a cumulative sum. It's kind of a two-step process in Excel. I first have to write the function. All right, then I'm going to get back in it, and I'm going to absolute reference uh, the, first, the first value here, 
once I do that, I can copy it down and just so you can see what's happening in the function. All right, as I copy it down, it's always going to be anchored at F5. All right, but the, the second cell reference is going to update as, as we move down. All right, and again, uh, I've already pre-graphed this on the chart, so the red line is the interest. And uh, you can kind of see that, all right, we borrowed 360. If we hold the loan to term, uh, we're going to actually end up paying back more in interest uh, than, than we actually borrowed. All right, and then, uh, yeah, you can take different cut points here and sort of look after five years, right? You'll have paid 90000 in interest, all right, uh, but you'll only have paid uh, about 22000 uh, on the principal, all right? All right, so that's the simple example. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, flip over to this sheet and look at a slightly more complex example where, well, what happens if we can... Uh, throw an extra two hundred uh, dollars at the uh, at the mortgage payment every month. Uh, wh what would what would the payoff look like then? How much interest would we pay? How much would we save compared to the base case? Okay. All right. So I'm going to just sort of start uh, with zero here. And uh, before I got here, I modified the payment form formula. All right. So that we use the PMT function. Again, and get the 21, 29, 54, and I'm going to add to that payment whatever's in uh, the B7 cell. Okay. All right. I'm going to calculate. Uh, oops. I'm going to calculate the uh, interest and uh, principal slightly differently. Uh, it'll work uh, just a little bit better if I do it this way. All right. Um, it, it's e actually easier to understand, so that's why I'm not going to use the IPMT or PPMT function. All right, so interest is really right going to end up being uh, how much did I borrow? All right, and I'm going to multiply that uh, by the annual interest rate over 12. All right, and in the first month, right, uh, it's the exact same that we got using the IPMT function. All right, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, absolute reference some stuff. So, always want to point at the interest rate. Okay, and then how much do we pay in principal? Okay, I'm going to look at whatever's in B9. That's the payment. All right, and I'm going to subtract away uh, the interest. All right, so if you compare this to the uh, to the simple table that I made on the other sheet, you'll see that those are the same values. All right, again, how much do I owe uh, at the end of period one, after I've made my payment, all right, it's however much we started with, all right, and then we uh, subtract away whatever we paid in principal. All right, all right, and then, you know, just to sort of test it real quick, if I do add $200 to it, right, we see that, oh, okay, I ended up paying 567 instead of 367, all right, and all that $200 goes right to the principal, okay? All right, so we'll just sort of verify that we have uh, absolute reference things that we need absolute reference. Once we do that, uh, we can sort of copy this down. So it's actually a little bit quicker to do it this way. All right, and again, uh, we should sort of see that, oh, uh, we end up at zero, uh, but we actually end up at uh, negative 200,000. All right, so... Uh, it isn't quite ready yet, so we're not quite done. It's a little bit simpler in some respects, a little bit more complex in others. All right, so if I scroll down here, all right, and I see that, okay, at the 290th month, um, the balance starts going negative, all right? So I'm actually now paying back more than I borrowed, all right? And then if I keep going, following the logic of this table, uh, it looks like they're giving me interest back, all right? Obviously, that's not happening. All right, so what we want to do is sort of modify this table so that it sort of recognizes that, oh, okay, as soon as this gets below the value of the monthly payment, um, we're not going to pay more, okay? So what we're going to do is modify this formula, and we're going to compare, all right, what's going on in the row right above it, and when that's less than the monthly payment, we're going to make the next row zero, all right? So we're going to assume that... Uh, we have paid back everything, all right? So to do that, I'm going to use an if function, all right? And I'm going to look at the 
a value in the, in the row above, and when it's less than or equal to uh, what's in B9, okay, I'm going to make the uh, loan balance zero, okay? And then otherwise, uh, I'm going to calculate it the, the way we've been calculating it, right? The loan balance uh, minus uh, whatever, whatever we pay in principle. Okay. All right, so we can see that, okay, right away, uh, then it, it sort of it recognizes that, that we're less than B9, and so then we're, we're not going to pay any more on the balance. Okay. All right, and then uh, we also have to change, we don't have to change the interest because as soon as the balance is zero, we're not paying any interest, uh, but we do have to, we do have to fix the, uh, the actual uh, principal amount, right? Because we're not going to pay back more than the 740.80. All right, so again, we're going to look at what's in, uh, what's in the row above, all right, when it's less than or equal to uh, B9. Okay, we're going to pay back just what we owe, 740.80 in this case. All right, otherwise, we're going to take the B9, all right, and then we're going to subtract away whatever we pay in interest. Okay, so we can see that, okay, we paid it all back. All right, so now I should be able to just copy this down, and I should see a whole bunch of zeros. Okay. All right, so we can see that by paying the, uh, the extra $200 a month, uh, we shave off uh, more than... Uh, more than five years, all right, so uh, we pay it off uh, in the 290th month as opposed to the 360th month. And we can see that when I have paid this uh, extra $200 a month that I have saved uh, 92000 in interest, all right, I, I uh, calculated that by, you know, summing the column of uh, interest, the F column here, uh, all right, I subtracted that value away from uh, the base case that I did uh, on, on the first spreadsheet, okay? All right, and then th there's another financial function that I'll show you while we're here. All right, in this cell, it says payoff periods, and we can see the payoff periods is 289.32. Uh, if I change this back to zero, all right, it adjusts to payoff periods of 360. All right, so this seems to reflect all right, what's going on in our amortization table? All right, and if we remember, uh, in that 290th month, we actually paid uh, 740.32 towards the towards the balance to bring it down to zero. All right, so if you think about it, we paid 289 payments and then plus a little bit more. All right, how did I do that? All right, I will get in there and I use this function, the n per number of periods uh, function. Okay, and uh, it's another financial function, all right, and it takes the interest rate, it takes the payment you're making, and then it takes the present value, and it tells you uh, how many periods that will take uh, to bring down to, to zero. Okay, all right, and then the last thing uh, that we can do here is, is do the cumulative sum to compare the the amount we borrowed to the amount of uh, interest we actually pay. Okay. All right, so now looking at the graph, we can see that, all right, if we, uh, if we do add an extra $200 to our payment every month, um, uh, you know, basically we paid off uh, right around here, less than 300 months. Interest is is uh, you know somewhat lower, three hundred thirteen thousand versus uh, the three hundred sixty that we bought. So at least we're not paying more than we borrowed. All right, and then uh, if you want, you can sort of play around with with different values uh, on the uh, on on the extra principal that you pay every month. Uh, if you do that, you know you're going to have to come down here and and copy these formulas. So I would sort of copy that up, and I probably don't need to start before the third month. I mean, I guess we can assume that we won the lottery and make a big payment, all right, up at the third month, all right, and then uh, essentially do the same thing, all right, at the
at the principal column. So now I can go ahead and see, well, what happens if I pay an extra 500 a month? And uh, when I do that, it really makes a difference. All right, I pay it off almost 10 years early. All right, and then uh, I pay, uh, the, obviously the, the rate of the paying off the principal goes up quite a bit. All right, and then, uh, you know, I save almost uh, $170,000 in interest. Okay, so I hope that helps with the uh, loan amortization.